Good morning. <clears throat> I want to talk to you uh, a little bit about uh, spheres and your place in life. And I want to think about that from a text in Jeremiah 29. So this morning, if you have a Bible, you could look with me, but uh, I'll read the text for you. Jeremiah 29, verse 4. This is some sobering news that Jeremiah is giving in a letter to the exiles. If you're an exile, what's the one thing you want? You would want to be freed from being an exile. You want to go home. Um, this past week, I experienced dealing with uh, some developing pneumonia. I was bedridden. I had to cancel a trip. It was not at all what I wanted. And yet in that, the Lord ministered to me, and the Lord taught me a lot of things. And the Lord helped me think through a little bit about how we can uh, sort of in a sense, we say things like bloom where you're planted, but how do you take what the Lord and his sovereignty has bestowed in your life situation? And how do you then seek to let God do something, not just with you in that, but in you in that? Um, nobody wants a letter while they're in exile that says, guess what? There's prophetic news for you. You're going to be in exile. But that's precisely what happened. I want to read to you from Jeremiah 29, verse 4 through 9. Thus says the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat their produce, take wives and have sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters, multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I've sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf for in its welfare, you'll find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are among you deceive you. Do not listen to them, to the dreams that they dream, for it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, declares the Lord. The last portion is the caution to not listen to lies where people tell you the things that you want to hear. You might be watching this and your life might not be right now what you hoped it would be. Maybe it is. That's wonderful. But maybe it's not. Maybe your situation isn't what you wanted. Maybe your relationships aren't what you wanted. Maybe the circumstances of your life are causing you a lot of stress and discomfort. I want to share a couple things with you. Um, and they're not the kind of things that maybe are balms to the soul, but I, I think in a way there is a, a kind of peripheral balm to the soul. Maybe something that we're not shooting for ends up being a bit of a healing to us. Oftentimes the temptation when you are in a situation where you don't want to be is to lament, um, which isn't all bad. There's a, there's a healthy time for lamenting. Um, but it, it can be uh, where we perseverate about our circumstances and we turn over all the things we'd like differently and we're, it ends up becoming anxious and depressed and sad and um, how can we change this and all that stuff. Um, instead of saying, wait a minute, God steers the ship and he's allowed me here at this port for this season. Uh, maybe you came to port a little bit rough and the waters were difficult. Maybe your, your boat banged against the port. You got a hole in your boat. You've had to stop for longer than you wanted. I understand. But God has things for you. And wherever you're at in life, there's, there's one thing that you can know. And that is that he wants to do something with you in that situation and in that circumstance. And I see here three things in verse 5 and 6 in particular. One of the things I see is, is you're supposed to incarnate. Meaning you're supposed to live your life with a kind of um, aggressiveness, a kind of happening to life, a kind of robust vigor, where you are in the situation you're in. He tells them, that don't, don't sit and lament at all, just build houses, plant gardens, eat the produce, take wives, sons, daughters. Uh, I mean, take them for your sons, like, like, like build a family, build a legacy right there. Multiply there, multiply there. Maybe an unexpected retirement. Maybe an unexpected job loss. Maybe a relationship loss. Maybe you relocated somewhere and 
It's not working out. Multiply there. Get involved there. Do what you can there. See what's in front of you there. Live incarnationally there. Secondly, verse 7, but seek the welfare of the city where I've sent you into exile. What, where are you? Be an influencer. Look around at people and say, how can I influence them? How can I pour into them? How can I, as a Christian with the Spirit of God, be someone that is out for their welfare? An influencer. And third, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you'll find your welfare. Be an intercessor. Wherever you are, and of course here it's about the city, it's about being an exile here in Babylon and about praying for Babylon. Well, that's true. I mean, you, you might need to pray for America. That's good. Pray for your, if you're in Utah where I am, pray Pray for Utah, pray for your city government, pray for all those things in your neighborhood. That's good. But I want you to think about your spheres for a minute. Family, church, work, friendships, um, places you go. Uh, you, may, you may visit a coffee shop on a regular occasion or a pub or whatever, I don't know. But there's pl places you go and people you see. And what I want you to ask is, what does it mean for me to be an incarnational witness of Jesus, an influencer, and an intercessor in that sphere? So I'm, I'm going to challenge you to do something really practical. Take a sheet of paper. Put you in the center. You can do it in a stick figure if you're an artist, or uh, maybe your initials. But then I want you to draw a big circle around it on your sheet of paper. So you're in the middle in a big circle. And I want you just to start working your way around a circle. And I want you to think of all the people, small and large, that you regularly connect with in that sphere. I want you to think about it. I want you to process it. And then what I want you to do is I want you to begin to think about how you can strategically be used as an incarnational, influential, and intercessory witness in their life that comes through your life that comes through your words and it comes through your prayers life words prayers and then i want you to just begin to list them i could do this maybe it's meet with them regularly maybe it's um, be kind to them simply maybe it's an act of kindness that you could do um, I want to, with my words, maybe a, a way of encouraging them or reminding them that they're seen by you, reminding them that you care for them. Um, maybe it is as direct as sharing the gospel with them, but ways you could influence. And then I want you to think about how you can pray for them. Maybe you should ask them how you can pray for them. Maybe you should consider praying with them. But I want you to begin to give your life to thinking about your spheres and what it looks like for you to live where God has placed you and to see that this, this outreach mission flows from every aspect of what it means for you to be you in this moment, in time, in the sphere that God has sovereignly placed you. Rather than lament and want things to be different, just ask questions and jot down answers and then strategize for your sphere, how you'll be God's light in your sphere this week for his glory. I hope the Lord blesses you. Take care.